Hey guys, in this video I wanted to go over some of the points of concurrencies that we have with triangles and I'm going to do that on each of these four different triangles that we have in this particular image here and I'm using a program called GeoGebra and it's available at www.geogebra.org the first thing that I wanted to do is look at creating what we call the in-center on triangle ABC here. Now, in order to create an in-center, what you have to remember is that an in-center is equidistant from all of the sides of a triangle. So if I think about how I'm going to create something that's equidistant from sides of a triangle, that means that I'm going to have to be equally spaced between two different segments here. Well, two different segments are going to form an angle, so what I'm going to do is actually bisect the angle. So what I'm going to do here is with this triangle ABC, I'm going to create the angle bisector of all three angles. And the way that GeoGebra does this may look a little odd at first, but I'm going to hide some of the angle bisectors that I don't need. So namely the ones that go outside of the triangle itself, which in this case are going to be this one right here. Just select to not show that object. I don't want this one right here, which doesn't go inside the triangle. And I also don't want this angle bisector here. And if you notice, all three of these angle bisectors meet up at a point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this line and this line. And we get a nice little point right there called M. And I'm just going to choose not to show these angle bisectors anymore. Because no matter how I move this particular triangle, we know that M is always defined by those angle bisectors, and no matter how I move this triangle, I see that absolutely there is no way to get M to ever go on the outside of it. So the nice thing about the in center is that it's always on the inside. Now if I turn on the grid and actually look at the different types of triangles here, obviously this is a right triangle, this is an acute triangle, and then if I go to an obtuse triangle, I can see that that in center definitely does stay in the middle. Now what's interesting about the in-center is that it's also the center of a circle that can touch each side of the triangle exactly once. Well, the way that I'm going to show that here is I'm actually going to create a very quick perpendicular here from our in-center to this side right here. And I'm also going to create a perpendicular over here and a perpendicular from the in-center to this side right here. And then if I intersect all of these different lines that are perpendicular through M to their different sides, you'll see that I get these nice three points. And what I'm saying here, if this is correct, is that the in circle should touch sides A, B, B, C, and C, A and go through these three points N, P, and O. Well, if I select a circle, center it at M and go to point O, sure enough I end up going through those other two points. And that shows that the insert circle will always be inside this triangle no matter how I move it around. So remember the in center over here in ABC formed by angle bisectors. The next point of concurrency that I want to look at is the circumcenter. Now the circumcenter is going to go through all three points, which means that it has to be a center that's equidistant from all of these vertices. Well, that's going to be the perpendicular bisector of each segment. So I come here to perpendicular bisector and I select each of these sides in the triangle. And you'll notice that when it creates this perpendicular bisector that they all intersect at this one spot. So if I just intersect two of them to create point Q right there, and then I turn all of the perpendicular bisectors off, what I want to first look at is where does it exist within the triangle. So the circumcenter for an acute triangle definitely stays on the inside. Now if I change it to a right triangle, you'll notice that Q ends up on the hypotenuse and if I keep extending it to make it an um, obtuse triangle, that circumcenter goes outside the triangle and that's true for any kind of acute triangle. You know, once this angle goes obtuse, it goes outside and if it ends up on the triangle, then I know that this right here is a right triangle where EF is indeed the hypotenuse. So move this around and you can definitely see this, but what's interesting is, is remember that this actually is the center of a circle that goes through all three corners of the triangle or vertices of the triangle. So if I center a circle at Q and go to any one of the corners of the triangle, you'll see that that circle goes through all three parts of the triangle. 
on the corners exactly. So if I move D around, you'll see that I'll be able, to, or even E, for some reason it's not letting me move it. There we go. So you can see, no matter how I change this circle, sure, or this point D, the circle that's centered at Q will always go through E and F, no matter what. Now, the next point of concurrency that I want to look at is the centroid. The centroid is formed by the medians of a triangle. So in order to form medians of a triangle, you actually have to create a segment that goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if I put the midpoint of all the sides up here in this triangle down here, I get S, R, and T. And to create the medians, what I want to do is make a segment that starts at a vertex and goes to the opposite midpoint. Well, if I do that for all three of these, you're going to see that each of these medians that I just created here intersect in one spot here in the middle. So if I intersect any of these medians right here, I get U, and I'm going to just hide all of these different medians so that we can kind of see what we're looking at here. And what's nice about the centroid is the centroid defines what's called the center of gravity for a triangle. So if you were to imagine this triangle on a piece of paper and you were to turn it kind of sideways and try and balance it on the tip of a pen, where you would need to put your pen would actually be right at U so that it would be perfectly balanced. And if I try to change any part of this triangle, you're going to see that the center of gravity always has to be on the inside and that makes logical sense because if you're going to balance a triangle, on the tip of a pen, obviously that needs to be underneath some part of the triangle. And no matter how tiny I make that triangle or how big, the circumcenter, not the circumcenter, I'm sorry, the centroid will always have to be somewhere on the inside. And that's true for a right triangle, it's true for an acute, it's true for an obtuse. The last point of concurrency that we need to look at is the orthocenter. The orthocenter is made by creating altitudes. Now altitudes are perpendicular lines that go through a particular vertex to the opposite side of the triangle and are perpendicular. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick our perpendicular line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to go through vertex J and be perpendicular to the opposite side of J which is line KL or segment KL and that's an altitude right here. So this entire line right here is an altitude. So now creating the altitude for K, if I start at K, I'm gonna go perpendicular to JL. And that gives me this line. And now starting at L, I'm gonna go perpendicular to JK, and I get this line right here. And sure enough, all of these altitudes intersect right here at this point, and it looks like it's calling that point V. So if I just kind of move these around here so you can kind of see what's going on with the altitudes and everything, you can see that for an acute triangle, the orthocenter is on the inside of the triangle. If I change to a right triangle, all of these different altitudes are meeting up at the right angle. So let me change these to purple so that we can actually see what that looks like here. So we're looking at this line here, this line here and so all three of these we're going to change it so that we can really make that stand out and get a nice view of what's going on here so um, for some reason that did not change all three of them interesting um, this is a new version of GeoGebra that I'm attempting to use and we'll see if it works out okay there we go Okay, so basically if I change this to a right triangle, you can see all three of the purple lines intersect right at the right angle. And then if I change it to an obtuse, it moves behind where the right angle used to be. So that's one of the tricks that you can use to help decide whether or not a point of concurrency that you're looking at is a orthocenter. Remember, if it's a circumcenter, it would have been on the hypotenuse. Um, so kind of in summary here, this video is just a quick way of showing you how to create each of those different points of concurrencies, what the names are, and what they look like overall when you are building them and where they can be found. Remember, the in center is always right here inside of a circle that touches only the sides. The circumcenter goes around. Your centroid, center of gravity, always has to be on the inside, and your orthocenter is allowed to go on the outside. With that, I hope this helps, and good luck on your test.